Hello. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 51st. How nice of you to join us. Um, I'm surprised we don't have a game in front of us. That's quite a quite a jump for me, it feels like. Really? Yeah, I'm so used to it. I guess we're reinventing the podcast We're here. reinventing the fire, here if at, you will. Here at 51, because I'm pretty sure <laughs> in the very first episode, we also opened with, oh, wow, there's not a game in front of us. <laughs> Hmm. So possibly. Good I'm way. Be surprised. I do say like the same eight things over and over again. Mm-hmm. Try right. not to. <clears throat> Guys, it's all rainy and shit outside lately. Yeah, I love it's like it. The perfect fucking weather, and it could be like a hundred where you are, but if like you just close the, the windows, you can pretend. Turn on rainy mood. Yeah. Yeah. And f- well, if you also got good AC too. Hmm. Yeah. Blow, blow some wind in your face. With I a guess fan. we're an AS- ASMR podcast now. Yeah, we've been for a while now. I guess so. Yeah, look because at, there's nothing to yell over anymore. Look how small our waveforms are. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really wanted just to yell into it, just to spike it once, but that would be mean. Anyways, what the fuck are we talking about today? Um, we're starting with with my recommendation for you, apparently. Guys, we got Rex. Yeah. Uh, every other week now. Hooray. Um, so I actually, you know what? I'll just, I'll say what it is first. We're going to talk about uh, Nirvana, the uh, Unplugged album. The acoustic album, which, which is strange. I don't actually, MTV Unplugged, that's just what it's called, right? Yeah. Okay. It's the Unplugged album, or I call it the live album, whatever. Yeah, I'll have you know I didn't go back and listen to it once. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. That's what I do. That's what I do with the Revolver. <laughs> right. Cause, uh, and a few other albums that we, I just know. We grew up listening to these respectively anyway. Yeah, Unplugged in New York, 1994. Um, I think the last thing to come out while Kurt Cobain was still alive uh, from Nirvana pretty cool this is about right i remember seeing videos of um of this yeah like yeah. watching videos of the the performance and all that i've got the dvd yeah um it's a pretty legendary set and uh i love it yeah i was what, gonna say have you have you listened to this before uh no but i've heard songs from them from like from them yeah of course <laughs> i know me and nirvana no yeah. i've i've heard um songs from this set mm-hmm. there's some some so i wasn't like i wasn't blind or anything i was fairly familiar with it right um for the set they famously or in infamously went out and played uh almost none of their hits and uh a lot of covers and uh it was fucking great <laughs> And I guess they were doing that because, uh, you know, it was Nirvana and they, uh, they're all, no, we don't like Smells Like Teen Spirit. We don't want to be I mean, famous. I'm glad they didn't play it, honestly. That'd be was, pretty funny. I was going to say, if you like, they got enough of the, uh, the bigger songs on there. Well, a lot of them actually became bigger songs because they were on this. Um, and, uh, the man who sold the world... Uh, is a hit of theirs or it's you know seen as a hit of theirs it's yeah yeah i guess it's in their wow i did not know that was in their top five songs uh that's a david bowie song i mean that's probably like just a spotify thing people playing the cover yeah mm-hmm. um and it wasn't a hit from david bowie um so that's a, an interesting thing um what'd you think um, well, I mean, it's hardly felt like a wreck or anything because it was just felt like, oh, I'm just listening to Nirvana, chilling out. Mm-hmm. Um, probably my favorite album of theirs, like, if you can call it that. This one? If that's allowed, yeah. Nirvana really? thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I said that when I recommended it and you were like, oh, God, hot take. And I was like, really? <laughs> kind of, I don't know, because it's not like a canon um, of the... Uh, of their like studio releases or whatever yeah i guess so it's a uh, i don't know like if it's allowed then i'll do the uh i'll do the live album babe again <laughs> the the what 
the live album favorite again. Oh yeah. I I think this is the only occurrence of that for me having a live album be my favorite release from a band. Um I mean if it's a good enough show, I don't know. Like that's that's kind of how I I operate. Like mm-hmm. the way to explain it cuz it's like oh it's an actual show that's going on. It's like its own condensed thing. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I do it think it kind of gives the illusion of it being a concept album, I guess. Mm-hmm. I do think uh, Nevermind is their best album, which I guess was like the obvious thing, so it became the the normy thing. So, so it's not cool to say that now, but whatever. Yeah, it's never cool. How dare you like <laughs> Nevermind? Yeah, how I, dare you like Lord of the Rings? You fucking normy. Mm-hmm. I do think that uh never mind is is their best album like as it goes for studio albums but i guess you only have like three to choose from and then uh incesticide which is kind of like their b-sides compilation type of thing right um i haven't heard that or whatever yeah um and let's see, I've, I've never counted this, how many tracks on here are covers, so I'm going to do that now. We've got one, two, um, three, four, five, six songs on here are covers out of 14. Almost half the album uh, are cover songs. Did you know that that many songs on here were covers? I knew that, like a lot of them were. Mm-hmm. I didn't like keep count or anything. I think, yeah, if you listen to... Uh, Kurt, he says, like, this is song by the Vaselines. Like, yeah. They played, like, three or four songs by the Vaselines. So, um, that's interesting. I, mean, I just enjoy their take on a lot of it. Yeah, me too. I, uh, I've actually listened to some of the originals <laughs> of the songs they've covered on here, and I do prefer these. Really? Personally, yeah. To, to the original, uh, tracks how interesting Mm -hmm. um so i don't know did you have any general thoughts for me i do like that um that one band's um version of take on me better than the original the one band yeah i don't want to get it wrong it's it's, uh the ska version real big fish i thought it was real big fish okay i don't want to like just i wasn't sure i don't want to sound like an idiot (laughs) Okay, I I thought you were trying to make like a Weezer reference without saying the name. <laughs> oh, I don't like it better. No, NSP also covered oh, it. I, so I like I, I like Weezer's Africa better though. Yeah, Africa. I, so that that's where that's where we stand, I guess. I feel like that should be the benchmark question for people who review like music or just get their thoughts out. It's like, okay, where do you stand in terms of Africa? Yeah, cause, where do you stand in Africa? <laughs> There's a lot of hate for the Weezer cover of Africa. And uh I don't know. I think it's better. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what a tangent. Yeah. Anyway. Um So, yeah, if you have any more general thoughts, go for it. If you don't, you can get into it. Uh, I'm not big on the album cover. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't know if you were making a meme or if you had something to elaborate on with that i mean it's, it's just it's just a pick of them yeah it's a pick of the stage with the with the fucking outline yeah i think the stage is uh i really like the stage uh I'm not, i guess it's more the outline i've literally never thought about it so i can't say i don't like it i, or, I don't know I, I literally just pulled this out of my ass yeah, I was like, okay. I didn't consider liking or disliking this album cover, to be honest. I uh, I really like the stage set they've got, though, um, especially if you do watch the DVD or if you see some. Oh, yeah, to actually like see the videos of it. Mm-hmm. It's very in utero themed, and I dig it. Reminds me of their music video for uh, Heart Shaped Box. <coughs> Which, uh, they didn't play that on this night either. No. hmm So, um, I guess we'll get into the tracks then. 
They open with uh, about a girl from Bleach. Yeah. So right off the bat, they're playing something. Right off the bat, they're like, this is our, from our first album, so if you don't know it there. Yeah. <laughs> and this might make me interested to check that out, actually, because I really dig it. About a girl? Yeah. I really dig the song. Yeah. Um, I've I've known this one kind of forever also. Um, it was also kind of more what I was expecting than like more than I was expecting with like it being called unplugged because there is some like there is some electric guitar. Yeah, there is. Um, is there on this it's one? Just not really distorted. Yeah, you get hit with that and the bass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get hit with uh, all all the things at first. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was very welcome. I was just like, oh, uh, there's. I really love the way the uh, the bass tones work with the acoustic guitar like throughout the album. There's some strings I got on, them Nirvana. on this album, too. Nirvana tones. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, some cello. Yes, yes. I mean, of course, they have to have that with uh, Come all apologies and, um, well, of course, something in the way. Oh, I forgot they played some something in the way. That's funny. So, I guess I should also just mention here, um, I guess the... the uh, experience of this album as a whole and some of the uh covers actually do tend to stand out for me more than the the actual nirvana tracks on here which is kind of funny also i think um because i do forget like i tend to forget which actually nirvana tracks were played Hmm, weird such as something in the way like if i'm going to listen to to come as you are, I'll probably listen to the one from Nevermind. I mean, I really enjoy this version. Me too. Uh, I dig the fuck out of it when the guitar comes in. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, namely, um, it's just the tone is much more distinct than like the uh, the studio version. Mm-hmm. And it's also, I think it's in a different key, also. Yeah, well. I think that it might be as well. Um, yeah, I just like you were saying, I find this to be the most like cohesive experience. So. Um, I if I never mind, it'd be pretty cohesive. Yeah, I'm not saying that one's not, but I think this one. I w- I'm not gonna pick out a track from this. I, I feel I'm like I'm gonna listen to it as a whole. I feel like this uh, this whole album is gonna kind of inch out. Never mind, just because like given that it's a live album, like I feel like a lot of these are you know the hits, not really hits. Um, yeah, but I'm, like they're definitely songs that I really dig out of Nirvana, and I just get them all like rolled into one, mm-hmm. like on the same with the same instrumentation and all that. Yeah, under one show, if you will. Yeah, I mean, you can see they clearly avoided, um, you know, like Heart Shaped Box. They avoided Drain You. Um, I'm trying to think, In Bloom. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that they didn't bother. Um playing that people would have been expecting and i really think like what we got is uh better than that anyway because that shit wouldn't have translated that well at least when i'm when i think about it i don't want to hear an acoustic smells like teen spirit i mean yeah (laughs) like i feel like they knew what they had and they were like yeah Yeah. we're gonna use this Mm -hmm. you know that's why exactly they had the uh, other cello Mm -hmm. for the other the other songs yeah so um that wasn't really much about about a girl but um i guess yeah i'll let i'll let you give some commentary on those and i'll talk about i was was gonna say i I think generally i just like the more kind of clear um less distorted nirvana me too i dig the i dig the riffs like when they whip out riffs and when um when cobain starts saying like shouting i can dig it Mm. um but I definitely like prefer when there's something to like actually like latch onto. Mm-hmm. A lot of Nevermind is like a good healthy balance. It's catchy and, stuff, and then it, in Euro is kind of like back and forth. <laughs> yeah, but there's y- some great stuff on Euro too. It's a great record. In Euro and Bleach are more noisy and less, um, you know, mainstream friendly, I guess. And Nevermind's full of hooks and it's very catchy, while also maintaining the heavier. Um, aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. Um, and there's parts here where Cobain is like yelling too, but I, in those parts, I think it works less in the favor 
really? of those tracks. Yeah, we can get to that. Yeah, I guess we'll have to because the one that comes to mind, um, I guess we'll probably disagree on. It's near the end. Yeah. Um, so I guess come as you are if you wanted to. I mean, yeah, we all know the song. I dig the fuck out of it. It's one of my favorite songs. Next. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I mean, like I said, not particularly. It's fucking awesome. This version, but the song. Um, my, my it, it's like this and all apologies are probably my favorite um, Nirvana I mean, originals. I mean, I really enjoy this version too. It's yeah. like it's a good alternative because it with the um. Like the little guitar solo section in the studio album is a lot, a lot louder, noisier front, like full frontal. Mm-hmm. And here it's a lot more subtle. It's kind of just like a break in the vocals. It's right. a good vibe all around. Mm-hmm. I agree. It, the, I did get to know this one pretty well because this is the version of the song that was on Rock Band for some reason, not the uh, one from Nevermind. So I played it a bunch on Rock Band. I mean, again, I can take either. Mm-hmm. Um, I Perfectly never really content with it. Yeah, I never really had to consider too much of a difference when I was jamming this on Rock Band. Um, Jesus doesn't want me for a sunbeam. I think it's the first time I'm actually reading that like title fully. Jesus, I don't remember who this one's by. I it's by the Vaselines. Is it? Because there's a lot of songs yeah. by the Vaselines on here. Yeah. Okay. I will. It's just because he, that's, I remember that's the first thing he talks about. I'm just like, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. Funny enough, I barely know what he says in between songs because I, as much as I heard this album, it was always like in my mom's car uh, on like a long drive at night. So like um, it was always too quiet in the car. And I've never fucking just sat there with headphones and listened so I could understand what the fuck he's saying. You hear that guy? James has never heard this album with headphones. No, I haven't. Um, so this one's by the Vaselines. <laughs> Sorry, uh, if you want to say something, go for it. I mean, I, 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 was, I dig this. I was trying to pull up the... Uh, it's very clearly not Nirvana, but I dig it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, this one. I'm trying to think. I guess as the covers go, maybe this one tends to stand out a bit less to me. But um, definitely dig this, dig the, dig the song. There we go. I finally got the uh, track listing pulled up. Damn, that took you like a minute. Yeah, well, I just looked up Nirvana and then I had to do a Wikipedia train to to get to it. Awesome. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Wikipedia train. Yeah. Yes, Vaseline's confirmed. Um, confirmed. Uh, well, what do you think about this track? What do you like and dislike about it? I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty hard for me. Uh, it's always hard for me when I grew up with an album to be like. What do I think about this? It's just like I know this. I grew up with this. I I uh accept this as it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can do that with Beatles. Yeah. It's just well, what do you think about it now? Like what if this was the first time you were like experiencing it or whatever? Yeah, literally when you ask me what I think about this, I'm just I just want to be like Jesus, don't <laughs> Like, that's what I think about it. <laughs> I think it's good. Well, all right. Yeah. Uh, I told you I think it's, like, maybe the least exciting uh, cover for me, but uh, not bad. Well, I think it fits right up uh, with Cobain's singing, like, style. Like, it's right up his alley. Mm-hmm. With how it, it's also the way you're singing it. It's just very reminiscent of something in the way. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I do he, like. He probably like saw that tune. And was like, yeah, we can do. We can. We can add to this. You know. I actually do like the chorus uh, part a little better. Um, the don't expect me to. Um, 
Yeah, I think yeah. this this did confuse my like twelve or thirteen year old brain a little bit that uh, Nirvana was playing it because it is such a chill song about Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no, I really do like the uh, the chorus as well. Yeah. Um. Okay. The man who sold the world already said uh, this is a David Bowie song, but yeah, they, he says that at the end. Yeah. They made they made the hit version. This, this of probably this. has to be my favorite track on here. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Um, like, dang, this is this is a good cover. Oh yeah, I, I did you listen to his no. version? No, I haven't. Because I do uh, prefer this one for sure. Um, yeah, obviously this is a big that example. That worries me, but yeah. Th- this is a big example where I was like, um confused again as a kid listening to the unplugged album and there's this electric guitar on here (laughs) again james doesn't hear anything that kurt says in between no oh did he say something about the electric guitar no like afterwards he's just like oh that's by david bowie yeah uh no i don't know how I must have listened to it once or twice like with the volume up loud enough to hear what he was saying because somehow I knew most of these songs were covers or I just looked into the track list at some point. But Yeah, you know, just look at the back of the CD. Yeah. Um, I do do that as well. Um, so would you say you're worried about listening to David Bowie's version? Uh, yeah. It's probably good. I mean, David Bowie's good. Uh, I just remember not liking it as much but my taste was very closed off when i was younger also gotta remember that (laughs) so i might like it a lot now but i haven't come back i think i'm just gonna enjoy this version for a bit Mm -hmm. bit longer and see what the uh, the canon one is oh no not me (laughs) yeah i mean yeah i love just the the climb up some good bass work too happening mm. on here. Oh yeah, like it's m- real tight. Oh yeah, lock in and in. And I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with Bowie's writing, but like, sorry, so, we got distracted for a second. Yeah, because we we're ADD brain. Um, <laughs> but no, definitely the bass has got to shine on this song a bit. Chris, yeah, Chris. However you want to say his name. Um, yeah, I agree. I think that's a very signature part of the song. Like the, that in the main riff. But and also, also the way just Kirk sings it, you know? Like yeah. Just the roughness kind of fits with, you know, with the melody. And he can hit the notes too. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that's just a lot of what is the appeal with, with his voice. Yeah, this is definitely a favorite of mine too. Um I have to agree with you on that. Um, I believe all my favorites on here are covers, which is kind of what I was getting at. I mean, come as yours probably like still higher just by default. Sure. Um. Cool. Love it. Uh, Penny Royalty. Love this version. I think this I. Is this is probably my third favorite. Second, maybe. I think I like this one. Maybe better than the one on in utero. Yeah. He sounds uh I don't know. At first, like when he was picking around, I was just like, it just sounds like um him fucking around with the guitar <laughs> when it's just him by himself. Right. But like quickly when he starts <laughs> singing, like it's just it just takes shape. Um uh, yeah, right. I just have to like make I I just have to make it past that strumming. I, That's just what it what my brain hears whenever I just hear like chord strumming like that. Just empty. Mm-hmm. I kinda wish I did go back and listen again. Um just because oh, I he was like, Oh fuck this up. No wait. Oh no, that yeah, was, yeah. That was for no, that was for the David Bowie song. This one he was yeah. like, No, I'll still fuck up. Um but I was like, Oh, should I do it by myself? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I remember. Um Yeah, and he hits these notes. He he don't he don't fuck up. I don't know. Great, great ass song. Great version. Love it. Yeah, I do miss this album, so I'm probably gonna listen to it 
you know that's what i mean like a lot soon. of this is just like me enjoying nirvana just unplug like yeah it's you really enjoy it like as a, a whole a lot of songs i already know yeah yeah i guess that's why you took a while to get to to listening to it huh i guess so. i don't know because shit's been crazy lately yeah i remember when i recommended it you also said like oh yeah i know this <laughs> oh, yeah yeah <laughs> i mean yeah at the time i was like yeah mm-hmm. um yeah i'll probably listen to this thing as a as a whole pretty soon while i'm doing some postmates driving ain't no reason not to it's a good night drive album i've just been preoccupied with other new stuff hooray aren't we all <laughs> yes so yeah anyways what's the um are we still talk anything else on penny royalty no nah, i mean uh, at the end he's like it's not a good the other guy in the back's like shut up really yeah <laughs> that's hilarious um no i mean i've always really liked the song i'm not sure if this was really a single from in utero until until uh it was on this album it was a standout track for sure i think so for sure um kind of surprised it didn't play rape me i guess uh mtv might not let them i think they i don't know mtv what was like i don't know maybe a very nirvana move yeah to do or, or I'm, I'm glad they didn't i had again. to just wait be like wait did they play it <laughs> no i'm glad no, they, they didn't. didn't yeah um okay track uh six dumb this is really interchangeable with the album version i think and i always love this song i really like uh dave Grohl's harmonies on this album uh, while we're on that, because you hear him in this track, and uh, yeah, and in all apologies. I later. mean, it's just kind of a Nirvana thing, like yeah, mainly in in Euro, where he just has like the uh, the the ending chorus, like no, not ending, the the main chorus thing kind of just echoed, yeah, like repeating with uh with a harmony. Yeah, I've always uh liked the song a lot. I don't know. No, I really enjoy this song too. Yeah, this track. It's just good ass version again. <laughs> like again, you can't really go wrong with this this out record. Mm-hmm. It's a. Uh, I I mean, it's very melody focused and it's very uh you know low key acoustic and light drums. It's kind of my thing. So I've always liked this one a lot. I think I'm just happy. And then yeah, I got the, the cello there too. This is one of those tracks. Yes, yes. Great stuff. Um I like that. Yeah, even in with away with Penny Royalty on this, there's never a moment where like it feels too empty sounding. Mm-hmm. Like, even to unplug, they really like kind of broaden it. Yeah. I just thought rem- the cello was there in the first place for, but like they they recognize like oh yeah this is a softer tone that we have so yeah we need to use it right i just remembered the barf green grandma sweater that kurt wore at this it's crazy how smart they they were with this shit and then like <laughs> yeah kurt just wore what he wore yeah <laughs> did a gig in his pajamas pretty much yeah i love it dressed like a smash player mm-hmm. uh, okay uh polly this one's pretty much like the same as it was on Nevermind, huh? Pretty much, yeah. And I mean, you hear more the 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 harmonies in this, and I think um, I oh, think it's right, overall yeah. softer. Is it me? Yeah, right, right, there right. in the is it me the jealousy? Is it? Yeah. Um. This is maybe always been one of my least favorites from Nevermind. <laughs> really? I love this song. That's cool. I think it's uh, still a good song. I think, I don't think that album really has a bad song. So, um, okay. But if it's been a. Uh, Why don't you like it? If I can ask. I guess uh, maybe it might just be the melody of it. I really enjoy the melody. That's weird. 
What I mean again? They're very memorable. <laughs> I like the chor- chorus melody a bit better than the verse melody. Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> also, that always Maybe was like, come on. For first, I mean, you know what the song's about, though. No, I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, it's a it's dark. a really depressing song, which would it's dark as fuck. Yeah. Which would usually be, you know, I like really fucked up, depressing shit. Um, but I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't know. I was too young when I first heard it, and just hearing Polly wants a cracker was like. I'm skipping this. <laughs> yeah, you're dumb. Kids uh, are fucking stupid. I hate kids. I mean, uh, Polly wants a cracker. It made me think of uh, SpongeBob. Whatever that, what you know that bird from the live action SpongeBob stuff? No, I don't. I don't give a shit really? about the live action SpongeBob shit. No. Really? Damn, that shit was so good. The stuff with uh fucking tom kenny as a pirate uh as it went on as it went on um with with those skits i really didn't like them early ones though for sure okay yeah no that's what i was talking about he had that green bird and it made me think of that and i was just like i can't i can't jam to that (laughs) yeah you're dumb well i (laughs) I disagree Um, The, the, the song is fucking called polly i reject your hypotheses um that's a quentin tarantino line okay so what did you have to say about it i mean i already said what i had to say okay dig the song it's not too different never mind no good shit (laughs) next (laughs) yeah i think it's fine um i think it's a good song but not one of my favorites on a plane I'm on a plane. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I have to do that too. Yeah, see, I agree. <laughs> I am indeed on a plane. I can't complain. Um, I think this is a good version of this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, following up Polly, it sounded weird if, you know, the studio versions did that. Yeah. But here they really, like, toned it down a bit. Start this off without any words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to... It's just a solid version of the song. <laughs> I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk. I don't know if anything like this song's melody I don't find is latchable as Polly. The song is still good, though. Mm-hmm. I still, like, enjoy it. Just I, I thought if we're comparing them since they're side by side anyway. I, uh, the thing that sticks out for me is the chorus. I'm on a plane. I really like the verse melody. So yeah, that's and funny. come on. I'm on a plane. I that reminds complain. me of like, bitch, I'm a cow. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a solid version. What more do you want from me? Mm-hmm. With all with a lot of these like um, sleeper hits, I'm going to call them as now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I, I love the song and the album and Here's a different version that I also dig. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Pretty much what it comes down to. Yeah, I think, um, you know, different melodies will stick out to different people. Yeah. And this one sticks out to me a bit more uh, than Polly, but uh, it's it's not like the strongest I've heard. I would really do like the verse melody. And the uh, love myself better than you. <laughs> always been good um something in the way yeah yeah no that's not the lyric hmm? oh wait do they say it twice yeah yeah say uh <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. see the the lyrics were there just out of order guys yeah Maybe he'll edit it and then put it there and then it'll be funny. No, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, same thing. <laughs> I don't have the same thing to say about this. That's um, fine. I, I really enjoy this song too. Yeah. I think... Like, uh, this is also one of the more standout ones for... Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, I prefer this one maybe um, to the Nevermind version also. 
because uh the change up in the in the instrumentation i think yeah in the verses on never mind the guitars like you know pretty low and muddy and on this one it's like a nicer kind of brighter guitar clean acoustic obviously <laughs> and uh so i guess i prefer that about it but it's a good song it's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. plateau the uh, meat puppets I, I don't remember a whole lot of this song so honestly. what i meant i remember not being super big on it what i meant is Meat Puppets, because I said a bunch of songs about the Vaselines. I meant the Meat Puppets. Pete Muppets. Yeah, because there's three here in a row from the Meat Puppets. Um, Plateau. I love Plateau. Nothing on the top but a bucket and a mop and an illustrated book about birds. Yeah, this is a good song. <laughs> I mean, it's funny to, to to listen and then get to that part of the book about birds. Yeah. The way um, Cobain sings it is like entertaining enough. See a lot up there, but don't be scared. Who needs action when you've got words? And he also, I mean, I guess this explains why I'm not big on the next three songs. Because, oh, you yeah. don't like the Meat Puppets? N- n- I guess at least not these versions. Just because this is the part where uh, Cobain starts to like wildly f- like fluctuate his pitch. And this is where it starts, and I'm not as big on that. One too late, just a little too But it is here. It is really funny to hear them like squeak birds. Oh, I was singing the wrong song there birds. for a second. <laughs> birds. Yeah. No, I was just singing Lake of Fire. Oops. Um, that's not yet. Um, I really like this, and I don't. I'm thinking of the next song, which is Oh Me, and the problem is I never remember what that is by the by the title. So, do you remember? We'll play it real quick. Oh, okay. I was just gonna look up the lyrics. Well, I remember the um the chorus to Plateau, and I was and when it came to like the ending of that, I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that part. Like overall, I think it was like fine, like to listen to. It was still like, oh, this is Nirvana, it's a groove, but I didn't find it as memorable. Okay, yeah, I remember Omi. Oh, yeah, I did yeah, Omi. I do. I'm trying to think of how the chorus That's goes. Baby. I'm having trouble remembering if there's a part of this that like I absolutely fuck with or not, but I definitely like it. Yeah, I I think the one I'm thinking of is uh, like a fire. Yeah, uh, so I love like a fire. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I knew you'd like it. I get it. the impression you don't. I knew you'd like it. They go to a lake of fire and fry. See them again till the Fourth of July. Hell yeah, I love it. Um, Lake of Fire might be my favorite of the three Meat Puppets covers. And uh, I definitely love the way that he he uses his screamy voice on this one. Yeah, I don't think it fits really well with the album. Hmm. Like, it's, it, like this is the most like he's been yelling. And it, it's kind of like an in utero yelling, <laughs> almost, mm-hmm. just because he's not hitting the, hit the notes. And it's really like apparent later on the more he's yelling. Hmm. I don't even remember that. <laughs> At least in one of the songs. I don't know. If it's this one. Yeah, you could be right. I don't know. I just never thought like, hey, I this. remember it was like near the back end. I just uh, remember loving this. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I. I definitely, I'm not, I do like kind of acoustic stuff, low, lower key stuff with low key vocals, but I do tend to really love some fucking harsh ass vocals on acoustic songs <laughs> also, which you'll see here or with aeroplane in this over the sea or, uh, 
Uh, worst which, things which, happen which at which sea. Which is a reference to uh, over there. <laughs> over there, like three podcasts ago. Yeah. Worst things happen at sea. Uh, he, Frank Turner hits those notes. <laughs> like they're, well, they're intense, but he hits them. Yeah, he he's hits belting, them. belting, but like. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's singing it. No, yeah, I know. Um, but Jeff Mangum hits those notes on Aeroplane. Not always. <laughs> yeah. Not always. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to, but... <laughs> um, it's in check the reference to podcast because there was a, like a few times where I was like, yeah, he doesn't hit the notes here. He's falling really flat and really hurts. <laughs> Hurt mm. my ears at least. Mm. Gives you that little wiggle. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say everything is in key, but he hits the high notes. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what you mean on as for Kurt either. If I, I mean, I, I might have the wrong song because I'm I'm all mixed up now. I haven't listened to it recently, but I don't know. Also, like. I'm not the kind of person to to cringe at a note that's like out of tune, so I might just not notice. I mean, you you will notice, like people can notice, but people don't hit the notes. Like it's, you can you, you can like think it's fine, like it's sure, but like it just it it rubs me the wrong way when I hear it. Hmm. Because it's just not like falling. So it's like some it's like the bass player or something wrong, you know. Except it's way more frontal. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I maybe you were thinking. Yeah, no, I think you are thinking of this song. Um. I just yeah, I, th- I guess I think it sounds good. <laughs> so that's that. Um. All apologies. Probably one of my favorite Nirvana songs. Just period. I think it is my favorite. my favorite off of In Utero. Yeah, I think it is my favorite Nirvana song. <laughs> and then uh, Come As You Are is up there as like, well. Like, goddamn, they get those fucking electric tones just so right mm-hmm. for them riffs. I don't know what it is, but it just like lines up with what they're playing. Mm-hmm. And this is a... like a twangy and it slides up the pitch a little bit. And of course, this is a like right at the right time too. Great version of it. The song doesn't lose much by adding or by just arranging it acoustically. Yeah, there's not much loss on here. It's still a great ass track. Mm-mm. Um, yeah, I am happy to see that this is apparently <laughs> their second most popular release. But it is kind of funny that it's above in utero on. In terms of plays on Spotify, Chandler wouldn't be happy with that. No, he literally loves this album. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, how can you not like this album? I just it's didn't just, think he'd be about it. <laughs> yeah. Because he likes the noisier stuff. I mean, uh, yeah, that's why I was curious and I had to ask him. He'd probably like, like Bleach. He should try it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, damn, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, okay, maybe not try, but check it out first. Maybe like look up on it in Tide Pods. Yeah, um, uh, maybe not those. No, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say about all apologies. I've kind of given, shown my hand with saying it's my favorite Nirvana song. So, yeah, there you have it. It's just it, again another another big big song. We all know it. We all love another, it. Another big hit. And this is the one I thought you were talking about. Um, The Closer. Where did you sleep last night? Because this is uh, definitely one of my favorites. This one um, and The Man Who Sold the World are real standouts for me on this album. But there's so much screaming at the end. And I think it's so great. I think it's extremely powerful the way that he oh yeah finishes it's this song, this song. It, it's this song yeah yeah no this is the song i take issue with i take back whatever i said about um like a fire like a fire yeah poor song 
No, I love this, this song. Is this part, yeah. It's so just powerful and chilling to me at the end here. Um, the way that he's... The way that he sings that final, like, shiver the whole night through and holds out those notes, especially if you watch the the the, the DVD version of it or the YouTube video. Like, he does a little, like, <sighs> like a breath out, and he just looks like he's on a fucking different planet. <laughs> like, uh... He probably is. Yeah. Um, no, this one, this one gets me. I love it. It's a it's a lead belly cover. He's a blues writer from like the thirties or some shit. Yeah, I honestly I think I'll skip this song. <laughs> I'm I mean, all apologies just like that's it, that's the end. <laughs> that's fine. I uh I it's definitely a standout for me. So, um that's kind of fun. I guess you could say the same thing. Yeah. Um Cool, we did it. Nirvana unplugged. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hooray. This is your rat. Close it out. Close it out. No, you gotta rate it. Fucking eight, sure. Eight out of ten. There you have it, guys. Okay. Um I think I'm gonna give this one a nine. And uh that's that. Solid. Now we're also going to talk at you about a movie. Talk at you. Did you rewatch your movie? No, I don't need to. Okay, cool. I've seen this so... This is so familiar to me. Great. Guys, uh, it's motherfucking Coraline. I, I like... I, I don't know. Who talked about this movie? There's a few of you. There's a few that still talk about it now. But Jamesy Boy hasn't seen it. No, I have. A long time ago. Okay, but like... Didn't remember it. No. I don't know, you didn't talk about it, like, at all. No, because, uh, yeah. So I read the book in high school. And I'm watched, shocked. And I watched... <laughs> what? It was one of the only books I read. Because um, I was real and into Coraline. They, they assign that in high school. No, it was just one of those grab a book and read it for class type of deal. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I wanted to read Coraline. Um, and I wanted to see the movie, and I did. So I, I I was into Coraline, but it was kind of like a a phase thing when I was like in eighth or ninth grade for me, I guess. Well, earlier, earlier than that, I guess. Interesting. Um, then I hadn't thought about it. Oh, for, you got it when it was all like cold and rainy and shit like this too. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, it was. It was good stuff. And uh, actually, I went ahead and re-listened to the book also. <laughs> You told me to watch the movie twice. I didn't. I watched it once, and I listened to the book. <laughs> oh, I see. Yes, because I yeah, wanted. Yeah, I haven't read the book, but I know of it. Yeah, I wanted to know some some differences if there were any, and see what I thought was better. So I listened to the book. Also, it was a short listen. It was like two and a half hours. So, yeah, not bad. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I'm not really going to talk about the book because we're here to talk about the movie, but I will say there was a couple big differences being uh, fucking YB. Yeah. (laughs) He's not even in the book. Yeah. Pretty weird. That's probably the biggest difference because he's, uh, I guess, one of the more notable characters from the movie. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's definitely one of the main characters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of more Coraline centric than than anything else. I um, figured the 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 uh, I meant like the movie, but oh. both both of them. I meant the book. Both of them are like more Coraline centric than any other character in, in themselves, but but uh, YB is clearly one of the more prominent characters in the movie, and he's not even he doesn't even exist in the book. The cat does. Yeah. The, the well, yeah, is, of course. Yeah, the cat is a lot bigger in the book too. Cat's pretty important. Yeah, um, but but yeah, know him. Um, and also, um, in the book, um, she goes into the what whatever you want to call it, just the the door in the floor. <laughs> 
Yeah. You, you call it that? <laughs> Whatever you call well, it. The portal? Yeah, I guess. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, she goes through that only once and then comes back through and her parents are gone already. So they build it up more in the movie. I think uh, overall I definitely prefer the movie actually. It's kind of funny. Interesting. Yeah, because I think they properly built built the events. They paced it better, I guess. Or maybe it's, it's different when you're reading or when you're watching, but just listening to it, I was like, huh, I didn't feel like <laughs> that was quite built up properly because you kind of meet the other mother in the book and then it's like she gets home, her parents are gone, and then she goes back and it's like, oh yeah, they're evil. You got to find the souls and whatnot and that's most of the book. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that's the little book summary chat what do you want to say about this i mean movie? i literally can't comment anything about on the, the movie I, yeah. I i don't know i can't say mm-hmm. um people who who read the book um have at him um the movie no it's great mm-hmm. definitely a classic for me yeah it's uh, uh walk, walk me through what you what you think of it okay <laughs> well, well like you know you took you take notes normally yeah, I took some notes. Uh, first off, it's uh, I don't I didn't write his name down or anything, but it's directed by the dude who directed. Uh, fucking, I want to say Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, oh fucking god damn it! I just looked up the movie Coral on Letterbox. Coral on accident. Coraline. The, uh, it's the nature documentary of coral, of sea critters. Yeah, namely coral and yeah. Okay, Henry other, uh, sea sponges. Henry Selick. Okay, just to give credit. Um, and you know, I think that I actually like this a little more still uh, than Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know where you stand on that. I mean, if you never thought about it, probably Coraline more as well. Yeah. I think they're both like equally good movies. Yeah. This one's like, I think maybe, you know, this one's like, not, if we're talking not, about uh nightmare before Christmas. I don't know. They ha- they offer different things. Yeah. That one's uh, like a musical and that's less my thing. I think even though the music, the music is so like it, it's, it's so repeated, like throw everyone like, you know, just everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's so like known, recognizable. Yeah. I was going to say the music in that one's pretty good. Um, but I guess it's still like not, you know, this is more consistently spanks. That's the thing. That's like the main like distinction. (laughs) Yeah. This is, uh, more my cup of tea, I guess. Um, and it was when I was younger too, cause I was like, you know, edgy 12 year old. I wanted to, as a, a story edgy. that was actually scary, yeah. Because this, this is Coraline the edgy and or scary. Yeah, absolutely. You don't think Coraline's edgy? No. Huh. Man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't see. Can't look at her face and be like, oh yeah, that's edge. I look at that and think of uh, think of Pierce the Veil. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think uh, we're thinking a different different things when you're like 12 Coraline is edgy absolutely um my god my cat is so distracting so cute sorry um yeah I mean it's a kind of a (laughs) story about a girl who goes to visit a land where people have eyes that are gouged out with buttons or no gouged out and replaced with buttons and uh, it's this dark and edgy kind of feel. And uh, I love it. I loved it back then and I love it now. <clears throat> I thought there was like a huge like fantasy element though with Coraline. Like it didn't feel dark and like like scary, depressing or anything. No, I don't think. It was just think... like, oh wow. It was like, there's a lot of eccentric shit happening visually. Like with how the food is. 
the, you know, the house, the design of it. Yeah, no, I think it's definitely dark. I think it's very gothic. Um, it is gothic. It was like Tim Burton inspired. Yeah, it's. I don't think eccentric. But like, it has like all the colors and everything. It's not like muted. Well, it's muted in the beginning, but like that's to um, yeah, that's to like show, um, the what is it? The contrast for the other world that is like very saturated with color and fantastic looking. Yeah, I don't think that's just for. Like the environmental storytelling and all that. Yeah. Um, obviously like the concept is um very dark and I think I do think a lot of the visuals are dark and gothic, but I don't think that necessarily puts it at odds with being described as eccentric either. Because it's like the visual style is still um, you know, it's Tim Burton esque. It's one yeah, of the, and it's very expressive too. Yeah, it's one of the. It's probably the main draw of this movie. <laughs> I mean, for me, it anyway. is uh, a very large appeal. Yeah, yeah, because everything is fully stop stop motion, mm-hmm. stop motion animated. Uh, yeah. You know, Mr. Bobinski's mustache is made of piano wire. Right, I didn't know that. And I'm pretty sure the tunnel is literally like just a slinky. <laughs> Bobinski. Yeah. Was that his name? Yeah. That's funny because I just was you know i told you i was listening to the book and uh i didn't remember if we got his name or not in the in the movie yeah you do but because we get his mail and we're like oh bobinski oh so weird and then you look at him and then he's like all all bubble bouncy and bubble russian (laughs) yeah you don't get his name till towards the end of the book and his name's mr bobo (laughs) so i was like what (laughs) same thing yeah Yeah. bobo sure (laughs) um Great. Yeah, actually, so my first note was that gothic visuals, always great, especially outdoor environments and set pieces. I, don't, I think this is just like tame gothic, I guess. Yeah. When you say gothic, my mind goes to like Batman animated series, Bloodborne. And that's like super gothic. That's funny because those are like so different in my head. Well, that's like, where my brain goes no, when you say gothic. Just like the two that you just named are so different from each other that I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, but that's like the um, still like the sort of a uh, tone theme, um, art direction. Maybe our minds all go somewhere different when we hear gothic. But um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, it's this whole uh, style. It's gothic-ish, yeah, for sure. This whole style is literally what the goth kids were wearing on their backpacks when I was in high school. I think you went to some prissy ass high school, dude. <laughs> no, they were <laughs> all the all the goth kids were wearing Coraline backpacks. Not not Coraline, but uh, the Nightmare on the fucking yeah on Elm Street. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> on Elm Street, yeah, the uh, fucking Freddy. No, I was joking because I because so, yeah. I told you that I accidentally was gonna call it that oh okay everyone uh, wore, i thought you were actually serious I was like, Wait. no no everyone wore the jack skellington stuff Look, that, that became moral because if it's an icon yeah you know like that's in hot topic yeah like, that's they, they, a, just, they just made, made an icon because it's a skull and shit it's yeah tim burton that's a goth icon i don't know just out of the tim burton stuff this is like kind of like the, the the lesser gothic but it's still there sure the way it's just like light chocolate i guess i don't know well, to me, it has that feel a lot, and it's also one of my favorite things about it. So, yeah, when I say that, I mean you do get the ghosts not, and shit, and like, yeah, there are there are some freaky, uh, freaky things being shown, like yeah. the rats too and the cat. To be clear, I'm not making uh, any I, criticism. I, I like that about my, it. My brain also goes like, oh, what does Coraline look like? The layout of the house um environments things that are the things that are made of colors and all that shit mm-hmm. the tunnel mm-hmm. the f- motherfucking du- it's so pretty yeah i love the tunnel and that's the point yeah it's supposed to entice you and all that shit the puddles the puddle the pot fucking the did you call it the portal yeah yeah uh it's it's got uh the tunnel it's got <laughs> portal tunnel puddle same thing. You see what happened now? Yeah. Uh, I'm th- I'm thinking it's got like blues and purples and yeah. And nice I, you blue. know how I love my blue and purple. Yeah, they're uh, cool colors. I like that. Um, especially very fantasy like, very well, mis- mystique, mysterious, all that shit. When you take cool colors and you um, 
and you make them I I don't know what the word for that is. I don't know, kind of like your room is. Gradient. Gradient and eyes, I don't know. No. You make it glow, fucking. Yeah, you, there you go. When okay. You, when you make it glow, that, that shit looks. Uh, Luminescent light. Very. Not that's redundant as fuck. <laughs> Luminescent colors. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. sure. Glowy, Ooh. glowy colors. Glowy, cool Pretty. colors are, are really. Ooh, fire. Are really uh, a big appeal. Shiny. Tape, me. shiny. <coughs> mm-hmm. Um, what and, else? And fucking Coraline could have had blue buttons sewn onto her and she didn't do it. Whack. Mm-hmm. Um. She could have had pink. Yeah. Or yellow. So, <laughs> so, when I found the Coraline story, um, it did feel like the, like, finally something meant for kids that's, like, actually feels, like, scary. Like, there's stakes <laughs> because the uh the idea of having your eyes taken out and replaced with buttons was like pretty horrific <laughs> and i wanted i wanted something like that as like a 12 year old who wanted to get into like horror shit i guess and that was a big appeal sure mm-hmm. i don't know it's weird i, I, I don't was, know when you got into i was right? never about the same time actually Right, be like middle school. Mm-hmm. Um, I was never scared by it, but I think it's because now that I'm thinking about it, at that point I've already seen The Shining, mm-hmm. and that just f- terrified the fuck out of me. So like sewing buttons to eyes just seems so tame. Right, but I also took it, I guess, more like a metaphorical thing. Just yeah. Like she taking her eyes, it's taking her soul. Yeah, and usually anything that was aimed at a younger audience that was supposed to be like I mean the other horror, one freaked me out like though. quote unquote there weren't like kind of stakes or a, or, or a real like disturbing kind of premise yeah I just thought the I just thought the movie was good and it had you know actually yeah good stakes mm-hmm. actually built toward a climax it was a good story and all that shit yeah and I think this one the fact that this definitely holds up as an adult is like a great kind of indicator that <laughs> that those things are at play, you know? That if you write a good story, everyone will like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all it is, fucking Disney. There you go. Um. So what else do I have? I did like... There's a lot of kind of quirk this... I can't think of the word. I want to say like disorienting kind of quirk to this that I like as well. Um, I noted. What do you mean that like you don't know what's coming next or? No, like um, obviously there's quirk in the way that the characters are like literally the their designs for one thing, but the way that they move as well. Um, like they often tilt their heads like completely to the side and like uh, they're hunched just YB, yeah. <laughs> and they're hunched over like YB. like yeah he's he's like, hunched that's just over. YB. <laughs> uh, well like Coraline also like moves yeah, she, she was mimicking side. his movements like near the end I, I'm pretty sure like I remember her yeah. doing that yeah and like the the way that the a fucking Bobinski moves so fucking I love it he's just so acrobatic and just so fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got he's, that round ass belly, but like th- he's lo- he's a marshmallow toothpick. He's me. So I mean, they ha- they all have like pretty interesting designs, um, and I really like that. Uh, they really did a great job making their her parents look completely miserable, especially yeah, but her, like adults as well. Her dad um, just looks dead. I, I mean, yeah, there's a reason why the dad is now a meme. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, are you winning, Dad? It's just <laughs> Dad sitting there on the computer looking oh, yeah. miserable as fuck. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, there's um, fuck. I don't know if I have it. There's this other meme where it was like, um, you and your friend at like two a.m. Like you message him and like they respond immediately, and it's the the Coraline dad and the Incredibles dad just tired as fuck at their computers. <laughs> That's pretty good. <clears throat> Um. Yeah. So I guess while I mentioned that, uh, 
I did like the the kind of quirky, wacky characters like Wyborn, like uh, Bobinski, like the parents. They aren't they aren't wacky, <laughs> but they're they're, they're, wacky, they're no. wacky, wackily designed. At least the dad. The dad is fucking neck. Um, and the old the the fortune tellers. Well, they all kind of got their own like shape, you know. The ladies, um, like their their silhouettes are identifiable. Oh yeah. The uh the way to know if you've designed a good character. Um, do you know one way, one way. Do you know uh the names of the fortune teller ladies? I don't know if they're the same as they were in the book. I don't know. Oh no, okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. All I know from the book is that it did uh a, a good job in like making um making the other like place feel alive. Mm-hmm. And like the walls were moving and shit, and the tunnel and portals, like an esophagus almost. Yeah, I think like the other mother is just a parasite, and this other like larger beast. Yeah, like even a lot, like a lot more like a cosmic horror type of thing, which is why I had any interest in the book. But that's as far as I know. Yeah, I think uh, anytime there's like the stop motion kind of thing, it uh, really works to make the the world feel alive and like kind of that uncanniness in, in a good way. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think it just looks fantastic. Um, Hey, stop biting me. What are you doing? Get down. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I was, I was bringing up those characters for a reason. I don't know what their names are. Maybe, in the book, I think it was like Miss Spink and Miss um, F something. F something. I don't know. I'm pretty sure name. it's not their names in the in the movie. Yeah, like okay. their face, first name. I forgot them though. I forgot their names at least. Um, yeah. Anyway, she. Um, I thought it was. They were pretty great. Pretty funny. Um, especially they they made a joke in here that wasn't in the book that I really appreciated too. And I was just like, huh, (laughs) missed opportunity in the case of the book where they're predicting her future. And, uh, they see the hand. Oh yeah. Yeah. And she's like, no, that's a giraffe. giraffe. I mean, I feel like that could only work in the movie. Yeah. There's no way you can put it in the book. And it's just like, I don't know. Right. Yeah. No, they, in the book, they just say like danger and then she calls over the older the other woman to look at it and she's like ah yes danger and then like at the end of the book she's like ah it's a hand (laughs) but yeah uh great visual gag um great comedic relief characters um also they had their 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 show later when in the other the other versions of them yeah (laughs) I was very surprised to see those titties in this movie (laughs) Jesus. Um I mean, yeah, I mean, well so is Coraline. I was just so surprised they got away with that. Um barely covered. Dude, that up. blew my twelve year old mind. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um was I I was I was also like, it's just crazy. Um I was surprised when they um they just unzipped their old skins and just fucking flew out mm. and they're their younger selves. Yeah. No, I love that too. Um yeah, quite quite eccentric versions of uh all the characters in the other world or whatever you want to call it. Well, because like the oh, other that, place. What was that? Well, because like it it has to be like in the idealized version of like their characters. Yeah. But like it's seeming well like some sinister type of tone to it. Like almost like they sold their soul for it. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. <laughs> right you know it's like all meant to entice uh Coraline it's like oh you can be this idealized version of yourself too mm-hmm. um whatever that means so I back when I initially mentioned the uh kind of di- I said disorienting but that's not really what I meant I guess like just sort of off kilter like disjointed feel um unease some of yeah i like that um and some of that was to do with the shots i like a lot of cool panning shots 
in here, which, you know, panning, it's a pretty standard thing to do, but yeah, um, really liked it. Um, but there was a thing that they did. I noticed quite a lot with having like kind of odd perspective shots with the camera tilted a bit. Um, and it kind of did kind of what I'm saying that off kilter kind of feel right uneasy feel um really thought that was great <clears throat> um and i noticed a scene transition here i guess too because this was all like kind of the technical camera stuff um yeah Coraline falling over from the table onto her bed don't know if you even remember that <laughs> since Wait. you didn't watch it recently but yeah what, what 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 point is this for it was um i think she's maybe gone to the gone through the portal and come back maybe once by this point and like she sits down for dinner with her parents and then um she's like oh, i hate this food and then she like kind of falls back in her chair but it like is a there's a transition and she's oh, yeah. falling into her bed yeah yeah just like that a lot um just wanted to give props to the yeah, to cool. the scene transition the cool way of showing time passage yeah Mm-hmm. Um, what I got? Do you uh find the music to be notable in this? Fairly, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. There was especially a, a piano track to- somewhere towards the beginning with a woman singing. I, I thought know, you were gonna say I with like the that. dad singing. I mean, I love no. that part, dude. He slams. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Well, that song actually is like is meant as foreshadowing for Coraline, like a warning. The one that the dad plays. Yeah um how's like how's it, that it's in the lyrics okay yeah I, I don't i can't recall i mean that was pointed out to me like recently too i can't recall the lyrics so if if you wanted to elaborate on that you could i mean i'll let people just like just dis- rediscover that for themselves okay takes a quick little little googly googly woobly as well um but yeah it's a pretty neat touch it's like you don't really notice that shit um there's just a lot of things going on with like the other world and the uh, and all that stuff. I guess you're looking it up now. No. Okay, because you're just looking at your phone. Um, no, I've just got my notes open. Didn't know. Oh yeah, what the fuck else were we talking about? Oh, the music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, how did I get there? Um, yeah, no, I really like Coraline's theme. The is that like the name of a song from here? Um, I mean, I'm pretty probably. I don't know. It's just like the the main kind of like the song that plays also whenever she's on screen. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that in movies, just you know, like this character's theme. I believe it's like the the opening music too. Which I love the opening segment. I found that to be creepy. Just like the uh, the the needle pin hands like sewing a, a a little girl together. Yeah, like a little girl doll. No, I agree. You know what? Because you get like this image of like just a sack and just with nothing on it, and then it slowly like turns into something recognizable. It's just very strange to see. That's actually a a thing that they took and ran with. Uh, but no, yeah, I do agree. The opening credits, uh, they found a way to make very enjoyable opening credits. And it, I always love when they do that. And then, and then by the end of um of the movie, once you find out the significance of the doll. And like who those hands are, like it gives it a whole new context. But yeah, what I was gonna add s- much, much more, much more to that scene. What I was gonna say is they took and ran with the concept of the button eyes because the dolls weren't in the book either. <laughs> so um, yeah, I do, I do just think they made a bunch of inclusions that were very welcomed in the in this movie's telling of this story. Um. I don't know if that's surprising to you at all or not, but I do like when I think about Coraline, I think of kind of like that doll aspect of it. So, I mean, it's just, I I don't know. I just have to see what, what they do with it. Yeah. Like it doesn't immediately sound like something I would have, I would disagree with. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I've only got a couple more notes here. Um, the, I guess like 
there there aren't many things any problems that i have with it um but if anything i guess um the usual like i feel like there are a couple spots where the information could be given a bit more subtly but it's kind of like the same way that the book does it where they just have like some someone tell Coraline something um they kind of have the ghost children tell Coraline um, like what happened to them and what she needs to do and all this stuff. Like, I don't know. Imagine if I she mean, just, huh? Well, I mean, why would they be vague? Hmm? Like if they could talk to her, why would they be vague? I mean, it's just, I, I think the rule for movies being like show, don't tell it could have been, kind of interesting to have her get thrown into this room and then we kind of see um something some other like indication that these children were were killed i mean but they they tell her like they that she needs to find the eyes like in order that's like really specific information like that'd be it'd be kind of a stretch for her to come to that like new sort of goal on her own i don't know i thought it was fine like you don't need to be subtle at all costs like in movies no it's like if the ghost can talk to her like why would they be vague like why would they just show up and like give her a riddle like if they if their souls are actually like communicating with her they would be like yeah this is what happened was this lady is evil and don't make the same mistake as us yeah but i do Wait, think all oh, that is very valuable insight thank you ghosts <laughs> Well, we already know that at that point, though, because she's... Right, but they they give her more information about, like, that she took the eyes. Find the eyes, you'll free our souls. Yeah, but we do know that it. <laughs> already, too, because she... This is right after uh, the other mother tries to tell Coraline that she needs to take her eyes out if she wants to stay there or whatever. Right. So we know that, but I meant like her needing to find the eyes is what the ghosts tell her. And then you yeah. find their eyes, which are like hidden throughout the the area. And then I I believe the cat tell is it the cat where they um where she finds the the looking thing to find it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, know, I thought it was very like that part was very in tune with earlier with her her trying to use a dowsing rod. It's all like very almost mythical type of a um, type of world quirks mm-hmm. i guess i don't know what else to call it mhm um i guess yeah i guess i kind of don't really think about the that subplot <laughs> funny enough cuz i guess that takes up a bit a bit of time it takes up a lot more time in the book of her finding the eyes yeah i don't really love that subplot um actually like i think there was enough here i enjoyed it i thought it was like really tense throughout because like she's doing it under a time limit and yeah. she actually fails in the movie like I, I didn't think when i was when i was younger i was like okay she's barely gonna make it and she doesn't i was like oh yeah i really, <laughs> I really like that i like seeing the button go over like, the it, it definitely yeah it's oh yeah the fact that's a button too is just such a neat little touch but I, I did feel she had like the proper motivation already with her parents. Yeah, being there. she has the motivation. Just she didn't, she wouldn't have known what to do if the ghost didn't tell her in that scene. Yeah, I guess. Also, also with like that whole section in mind too. I was just gonna talk about um, the Bobinski section because I just remembered that. Sure. With all the rats and the empty coat, that fucking yeah, that was creepy. Oh yeah, I like that. Very, very creepy scene. And then, like, she uses it and sees the balls, like, where the 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 neckline of the the coat is. Then all uh-huh. the rats just come out of it. <laughs> A lot of cool visual stuff here. Um, and yeah, we get some great shit in that like sequence. Like, we get the father actually trying to help her, like, with the pumpkin patch too. Mm-hmm. And then you see the environment like start to like cra- like um, oh, break yeah. down, like. Everything turns progressively like as she gray gets and more. White. Yeah, yeah. I like that we see the end of the world, and it's even, and it's even wrapped up at the end with the uh, where she gets the dream sequence of the um, uh, of the uh, the souls. Yeah. Um. 
I, I guess it's just still a, a subplot that like if I was writing this, I would have just left it out. I guess <laughs> I would have used it for uh, an extra kind of like creep factor. Like I've I said. mean, I, I, f- I think it's so like integral to how she gets out of there. You can't leave it out. Really? Yeah. Like if you take that out, like how the fuck she get out of there? <laughs> you have to come out with a whole new, new thing. Well, she made a, she made a, not a bet, like, she played a game with the mother that she could leave if she... If she found the eyes. Was it not if she uh, could find where her parents were? Um, Sorry, I might get, oh, be wait. getting confused with the book at this point, because that's in the... Because I thought it was kind of both. I thought it was if I find... I think she doubled or nothing with the parents. Okay. Um... Cause like that that comes later, um, yeah. Cause she gets out of there after finding the eyes, but it, like her parents are still gone, and then the ghosts are like, "Yeah, oh, you're still in danger." So she and then she has to go back for her parents and goes like toe to toe with the mother. Mm-hmm. Well, may, maybe there that part's a little messy because she has to go back and forth. Yeah, I but, do. like. I, I, it, it makes sense like how that, that kind of lines up. I do prefer... Uh, there's a, there, there's a cause and effect, a, an order of events, if you will. Mm-hmm. I do prefer the what we got in the movie again to the book because we got... I don't know. We, we had some weird... <laughs> uh, or maybe it was just the, uh, the audio tape I was listening to that like made me think those these sections were not that great, but there were parts with like the rats singing... And like with, uh, I think with those children's souls singing and uh, it sounded really dumb on the tape. <laughs> so that might have made me be like, oh, yeah. Ugh. Um, I mean, I'll fuck yeah. even like the third section with the, um, with, with this acrobatic sisters and like she has to get the eye and it's clasped between her hands. Like, yeah, that was, that was pretty tense. Like, yeah, the movie definitely like builds up to like really being tense and, testing Coraline and her limit. Right. Um, sorry, just had a thought um, while I was on it. Um, I guess if, if anything, if there's one character I thought was maybe a little more interesting in the book, it would, would be the cat. But I do think... The yeah, because the cat talks more, doesn't he? Like, it establishes mm-hmm. immediately. Where they kind of save it um, in the movie. Yeah, and there's this whole kind of thing. I don't, I don't know why they did that. I have to, maybe I need to watch it again because I don't think there's any reason to like why the cat shouldn't just be like <laughs> hello hello yeah. there yeah and the cat just kind of helps her and stuff and uh, also well I what I did like better about the movie is like she was kind of a like an asshole to the cat and then so at first the cat was like nah well, it's, it's a YB's dumb cat yeah yeah she's he's like nah I'm just a dumb cat remember or something like that <laughs> yeah and then and then yeah um but yeah in the book kind of the cat was not just there to kind of help i guess um he kind of had a bit more of a personality to him he was uh kind of just uh to move the plot forward in the movie but um a pretty necessary character and i do love how it all culminates with her just chucking the cat at the <laughs> the other mother. That happens in both yeah. versions. So, yeah, um, yeah. That's uh, the last thing I had was on the cat. Um, I like the reincorporation. I think they did that pretty well. Um, with the cat doesn't like rats reincorporation. I mean, yeah, it just it, it it more or less just gives that statement like reason to exist. Yeah, I was um, like, oh yeah, I remember he doesn't like cat rats. <laughs> yeah, usually like I don't know. I think I heard Sardonica say like, "What's a good reincorporation?" And it's like when you aren't expecting it to come back, and I wasn't, so I like it's. I kind of agree with that. Like, if I'm not if I'm expecting 
or if I'm not expecting some line that I'm casually hearing to play a bigger role later, then it's usually a lot cooler when it does come back into play. And it just seems like a thing like, oh, a cat doesn't like rats. That's a, it's just kind of nature. (laughs) You don't think it's going to come back into play, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Just pointing out that I like the reincorporation there. Cool. So, you have anything? Um, I I want to talk about how great the uh, other mother character is. Sure. Did you at, like take any note of her or? Um, uh, I didn't take any more notes. Damn. Okay. Um. I don't know. The mother, the other mother's fucking such such an interesting villain. Like she's just enticing. She's literally like tr- she's a spider, pretty much. Mm. Like she's a spider in the web, like trying to like lure her play. Well, she has, you know, with the several times showing with the ghosts and everything. Mm-hmm. So like she is, she she means business. Yeah. Um, I love her transformation. Also, towards the end, I love the fucking uh, spider web. Like the way the the room just breaks down, mm-hmm. and also like at the end where it shows how quickly the uh, the portal like collapses in, mm-hmm. like that's mentioned in the book. I know that too. Like it seems like like le- like going in is like really quick, but leaving um, takes forever, like because it can expand. Yeah, what I think they did with well, I guess I think that would be I, honestly that sounds cooler in the book because like it leaves your imagination to be like, how the fuck does it do that? Like, how is that geometrically possible? And in the movie, it's just like, it's slinky. <laughs> yeah. It's cool to see it visualized. I, I really I think, love I think the book inches out though. Yeah. I love the visual. Um, like again, the tunnel is great to fucking see. I was well, going, I think that's just a strength with uh, the different medias and all that, that we've been kind of going back and forth with. Yeah. I think, um, Again, like I guess it's kind of more on what I was saying earlier with the, with the, how she kind of just in the book goes, goes to the like other world kind of place once, and then comes back and her parents are already gone. I really like that in in the movie. Um, she goes, what two or three times at least. Um, like so she really kind of wants to be there by the time um the other mother's like yeah she enjoys it like she falls into like yep. you know the appeal that exactly the shows yeah so it kind of like builds up to where she actually like really enjoys it where things kind of just happen too quickly in the book i think um for it to have that same effect so she actually and, you know, some of the audience, too, might actually like the other mother if they're not <laughs> expecting shit to go awry. Um, and up until kind of the reveal of, oh, we'll have to button your eyes. And then, which is which comes a lot later, after a couple visits, and after they're both kind of established. And the dad kind of has more of a character, too, in the movie the other the other father so um and they're they're kind of just you know what Coraline wants her parents to be because she's kind of like she feels like neglected at home yeah 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 that's that's safe to say yeah um there are many times where Coraline wants to do something or wants to buy something and the mom just shuts it down Mm mm-hmm She's a total bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Stupid fucking broken neck. How dare her? Yeah, and then at the at the end of the movie, she's uh, the parents seem a lot nicer at the end. I mean, I don't think that her parents are like terrible. I I remember there's definitely like a a a shift from where we started. Yeah, you know they're doing the garden, and even her mother's like, I hate dirt. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But I don't um, like sand. <laughs> it's not the same. Mm-hmm. 
Right. I remember, I think as a kid, I thought her parents were like the worst, <laughs> probably because I was also a kid. <laughs> I was like, God, parents are so not cool. How come they never want to play with dirt? I'm like, her parents <laughs> suck. Yeah. This is what I thought. Um, but yeah, on, on the other mother, I think she is interesting how much how much time we get with her seemingly um you know loving and and then it makes you wonder what her true form is yeah after she turns because even then it's still like reminiscent of like you know Coraline's mom she like uns- the hair you know it's mm-hmm. like that's still humanoid so it's like how far does this go from mm-hmm. <laughs> the piano with uh arms just thought of that. Yeah. The the panel that plays itself. Yeah. No, it plays him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah, he yeah. says. I love how the gloves are going by itself, too. This one The, plays the keys are actually accurate, too. Oh, that's awesome. Like, it was actually playing it. It's cool when that happens. Um, and then this, this movie don't fuck around. It has attention to detail. I mean, it has to with, like, you know, with literally how the characters are made and how the set is made. It's a, it's just a fucking neat. It's every aspect of it. You took in lots of detail with. Yeah. Uh, and the fucking, and Wyoming has a cool-ass bike. Oh, yeah. And a mask that totally was used for a uh, trailer bait. Yes. Yes, it was. Cool, though, but it's trailer bait. I, I was just going to say I've never been one of those people who, like, cares if stuff's like accurate on the in a cartoon like when someone's playing an instrument but like it's obviously a lot cooler when it is accurate but yeah um i mean i'm i'm not gonna like hold it against it unless it's a music you know movie yeah you know oh yeah no 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 i was just um gonna point out because uh uh you know i've been watching total drama and trent plays guitar and he's like you know it, what it sounds like is just a few strums, but what's on screen is like his left hand, which is you know yeah doing just on the on the fretboard is all over the place like and he's like <laughs> yeah and it's just like he's just strumming a few G's or something and it looks ridiculous. <laughs> hey, I mean, but I you, think it's so funny. I, I mean, you you guitars have it easy. Like yeah. on screen, they literally just have the hands are staying the same. Just yeah. get the motion, you got it right. Us, us piano players, literally just characters slap the shit out of the keys, and it plays the notes. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, and a lot of these fuckers only have three fingers. Really? <laughs> or or four if you count yeah. the thumb. You know, okay, you don't yeah, have yeah. a pinky. Yeah, I get you. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's well, it's like you're telling me you're telling me fucking Tom the Cat is playing good old Ludwig Van. <laughs> I don't Ludwig Van. I don't believe it. Uh anyways, I'm glad you enjoyed the movie. Yeah, I love it. Very 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 good shit. I've seen this so many times. It's easily I don't know, it's easily to like just put on for background noise just to for me at this point, just to like experience every now and then. I I haven't thought about this till just now, but it might be my favorite animated movie. Nice. Unless you can think of something I've, that you know I like that's animated, but right now I can't. So, um, not yet. You you haven't really gotten to. You don't really watch a whole lot of animated stuff that's not like TV shows. Yeah. So like movies and all that. Um, definitely, definitely up there for me. I would mm-hmm. say. Uh, I don't know about like favorite animated thing ever. Uh, that'd be a little steep to say. No, I definitely probably say movie though. I mean, you know, the only other th- things that come to mind are like the Beavis and Butthead movie, which I love. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's animated. I was like, I don't know. All right, sure. Yeah, I, I forgot how we got there. Yeah, or like the South Park movie, and I'm like, yeah, these are like that one. I, I need to revisit the South Park movie. It's been a long time, but obviously, totally different camp. And uh, <laughs> a little hard to compare, but I think like at least numerically, this one would be on top. So, yeah, kind of got my thoughts out. If you wanted to touch on anything else, y- y'all, I just assume that y'all have seen Coraline at this point, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, like with I guess a lot of these wrecks, they're kind of more well-known shit. I just assume that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, if you haven't already, just go like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because there's a lot of like, I, I don't know, every, I feel like this, this movie doesn't like miss out on any scene. Like it's always gay. It doesn't waste any time. It's trying to get things across, which is what I think I want to say is the same for, um, the Wallace and Gromit movie we covered last time. Uh huh. Um, but definitely, definitely Coraline. I can't think of like any, any like dead space, dead air, like l- lull moment or anything. Yeah. It's always got you, it's always got you glued to the screen, whether it's like, yeah, it's airtight story or, um, or the visuals. It's gonna, it's gonna draw you in one way or another. Yeah. Um, you know, actually, I guess if you compare this to Wallace and Gromit, I enjoy this it's fucking more. Fantastic. And I, I do, I did love Wallace and Gromit too. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a good example of something I, I that's actually. I just kind of brought that out because, like, I I, I um, yeah, I, I don't think I gave Wallace and Gromit enough credit last time. Right, but yeah, I think they're closer to the same camp than this and like Beavis and Butthead are. So. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. in the in the way that like they don't really waste time. They don't like have mm-hmm. shit for filler for padding or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's cause and effect. It's just yeah. <laughs> Even if nothing else, you'll enjoy what's visually happening at all times it, I think, it's so. it's a really really simple story to follow mm-hmm. like this is as accessible as it gets um you know humor when it's there it's it it it, it hits you like mm-hmm. it hits you in the back of the head like you don't really like know what's coming and then it's just like eh, you know yeah i really enjoyed the humor when you, it was you there some, you get some visual shit too um, it's just kind of like to break up some of the um, some of the sour shit and thoughts that are happening. Mm-hmm. You will be in a fucking ride, and you know what? Like thinking about the movie, it could be a good game. It's just too bad. Like all the f- people uh, coding PS2 games know what the fuck they're doing. Yes, you know what? maybe that game is good. We should revisit it. We tried it. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how I got here. Um, movies a ten. See ya. Find the blue things. Um, so I gave it a nine. Very good. Um, that's, uh, that's that. <laughs> so, sorry, everyone. Um, yeah. How dare you give it a nine? I have like, n- no, no, no. no I, I have mean, literally nothing bad to say about this movie. Like not, not any, not any part of my body like feels ill toward this movie. That's rare. It's one of like the only things. All right, then update your letterbox because you also had a nine. Oh well, it's a <laughs> exposed. F- fuck letterboxed. <laughs> um, perfect. Um, sorry guys, was catching up. Didn't think we were stopping it right there abruptly. I oh, I should also mention I love the fog, the way the mist fog, whatever looked. And that 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 concludes it. Um, the water as well. I don't know how the fuck they got it to look like it, but man, mm-hmm. they got that shit to move and behave a lot like it. Dude, it's just oh, visual. So, god damn it, <laughs> we didn't. Everyone really, needs a pay raise there. Like fuck, we didn't really say <laughs> artists. Everybody knows what they're doing in the movie. It's so nice to see. We said like nothing about YB, but that's okay. I guess. What, what what is there to say about YB? Fuck him. He he likes um likes the red album probably. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. All right. Um that's that. So, recommendations. You know, maybe that's why it was a 9 because of YB. <laughs> maybe uh okay, yeah, recommendations and what we're doing next week. I guess what we're doing next week first. Uh you want to announce what you've chosen for us to do next week? <laughs> you know, maybe I, I I thought about other things instead. Okay. <laughs> right. Um but I have to lock it in, you know. Okay. Um, because that's what we went with last time. Okay. But that means ideas are brewing, guys, so don't worry. Good. Uh, this one's been um, ca- kind of like just sitting underneath me for a hot minute uncomfortably. This is what um, we... Like a shit that just won't come out, you know, that just won't fall, but you don't want to go back there, and you just kind of want to let gravity do the work. We did like 40 episodes of Rex, and we've been itching to get back to this kind of format, and this is what he came up with first. It's not what I came up with. It's like it's just <laughs> just the idea has been there for too long and it's almost like a mental block. It has to leave. Guys, we're going to talk about uh what is objectively the best cereal. Cereal tier list. Yeah, a cereal tier list. Okay. Um stay tuned for that. 
Uh, I'm an avid cereal like, enjoyer. Yeah, enjoy it. Connoisseur. Um, shit's poison for you, but I've I've had a lot of it in my life, and I'm still alive somehow. Yeah. Um, it should be something. You you know your way around a ser- the cereal aisle too. My way around a cereal box. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Dude, they're fucking giving you Pokemon cards now. McDonald's did that too. They they, they finally know like oh there's money in this shit. They're like. It sucks for like 15 years too late. Yeah. That would have been like so lit. Are you kidding? Me, my fourth grade ass going to McDonald's getting a Happy Meal with Pokemon cards. Yeah. You know. It's like two trips in like there in one. This should be fun uh, to talk about some dumb shit like this. Um, I, I'm looking forward to talking about dumb shit half the time. So cool. And I'm um, looking forward to, uh, to eating some cereal. Serial tier list next week. Uh, on to recommendations. Um, and you're recommending first. Interesting. So, so like, we're going to have just that this in-between episode of, like, I got to stay tuned for this. Every time, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, all right. So, yeah, another, another thing to recommend. Well, I already told you you're getting a game. This one kind of, like, um, it blindsided me a little bit. Sure. Um. I, a lot of these, like, if you get any games, it's really just shit that's been in my backlog that I'm going through now. Um, mm-hmm. That's what it is, but, like, it just, I, I'm, I've I'm been going around recommending it to all my other friends, too. Okay. Um, It's not often that that's going to happen with the games, either. Um, You're getting Gris. Don't even know what that is. Gris. I have to say it like that. Um, Yeah, cause it's kind of, um, um, I, indie i guess it's by devolver studios which is the same people who made hotline miami oh god all it's right it's totally different uh, way way different way I was different like, of a game. this is gonna raise my blood pressure again no 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 no. this game is so laid back uh not even not difficult this game is so uh accessible like anybody can pick this up and enjoy it okay great um, you also said it's is, short this is in the same vein for me as Coraline. Yeah, it'll take you, it'll take you like four or five hours to beat the game. Cool. And then another extra one to complete it if you want to. Very much worth doing, but yeah. Um, no, I love it, uh, and I think it's very good. The game is of good quality, and I want to make a review on it too. Looks so, very pretty. So maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, the game's gorgeous. Um, and I actually do want to get a review started on it. Do it. Maybe uh, this will push me in there shit has been really tight lately working on things i can get it on ps4 so probably even yeah the ps5 get, and then play it yeah ps4 ps5 uh switch uh steam yeah um all that jazz most of the stuff on the ps4 store is on ps5 some of it's not but <coughs> yeah cool gris stay tuned for I, that I, I like the occasional like semi-obscure game mm-hmm. one that i gotta toss at you just something short Short I'm looking sweet. forward to it. Uh, it's I also think. got a kick-ass soundtrack. I really don't know what to expect at all. So there we go. The soundtrack and visuals, I think, are definitely like next par, like a, right in a whole different ballpark. Um, and for you, I've got another album. Uh, you, <laughs> I told you you're gonna be getting some albums because I'm on a band hunt. I'm currently. cool with that. Um, so I don't know how many in a row you'll get, but I, you know we're varying our shit now. By having the in between I mean, podcasts, so. I mean, I'm cool with it as long as it's like Nirvana, like what what we had today, like Nirvana. You, you mean know, as long as it's as, long, as long as it's good, <laughs> as long okay. as I like it. Okay, well, um, give me a prog rock album. No, give me one. <laughs> um, I'll give you. Last time I gave I'll you like three hours. Last time I gave you something with the word progressive in the genre title, it was something you didn't dig. Um, which was Neutral Milk Hotel. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> it was progressive folk. Oh, yeah. Fucking, ugh. <laughs> um, but... Progressive folk. It just sounds so cursed. Let's see what you think about this progressive indie rock type of thing that I'm going to give you. Oh, um, no. Progressive indie rock. Oh, no. I don't know. Well, it's just experimental. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I haven't even built this up like it's a huge thing, but it is. Um, Radiohead. Okay, computer. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, computer. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. You're you're making me do this finally. 
Yeah, I've had the album for a few years now. Or no, 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 like year and a half. I picked it up in Arizona. All right, well, you're taking me through some bigger stuff at least. Yeah. Um, and I've actually Just done making a. Making me do it really. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I've done a dive into their discography. I was kind of hiding my Spotify from you. Yeah. Um, because you'd see every Radiohead album. Because mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out which one to recommend you, and I haven't decided which one's my favorite yet but this one's easily like the one to go with i think at least for now and you might this album like is huge like yeah it's very well known malad was also listening to a song from this in his car and i was like yes (laughs) uh it's it's really good stuff i think a classic as far as i as like as far as i heard so it should be a treat to go through yeah, I think you'll dig it. It's it's uh I haven't heard any Radiohead at least much, much except Creep, which uh I'll have you know even though I do like Creep, the band hates it and most of their audience hates it because they think that uh it's it's embarrassing. It's a shitty grungy kind of track, but I like it. I see. <laughs> yeah. So, all right guys. Um well, stay tuned for that. That should be interesting. Gris, it's going to be quite the uh Quite, quite the contrast to uh to talk about these both of these uh these things next to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Or maybe it's gonna be a repeat, really, of this one because you got like the, the fantasy type of type of thing, like Coraline, and then something that's usually more grungy, mm-hmm. like Nirvana. Um, I do don't expect grunge because they also hate being called a grunge band. <laughs> They're kind right. of like an experimental art rock band, or if anything, not okay. even all their stuff's rock. Like they kind of went more electronic later. Okay. So I don't. Know, but but this album, I think you'll like it. Let's let's see what happens. Probably will. But yeah, let's we'll see what we'll have to say about that in the next. Oh wow, two podcasts. Well, stay tuned for number episode um, fifty four, three, fifty three, fifty three. Like numbers. Yeah um cool that's a lot of candles guys and guess what we're doing with this one let's blow out this candle. it's going right up my ass now uh-huh.